Hello everyone and welcome to another Transformers review and as you can see I'm doing something a little bit newer and certainly newer to me as this was one of my boot fair haul um, this figure obviously isn't G1 this is from 2006 and it's from the Cybertron line and it's a deluxe figure and his name is Downshift and he's an Autobot now he's kind of a homage to Will Jack, which you'll see more later in his robot mode, rather than his car mode, which is modelled along that sort of 70s sort of muscle car look, a little bit like the Starskin Hutch car, but as I'm English, I'm not quite as familiar with the different American car types, so maybe one of the American guys who watches my reviews might be able to tell me what sort of car he's actually based on. Um, as you can see, he did come complete, even though he was loose when I picked him up. Uh, so you've got two matching missile launchers with grey missiles, and they do work, and they do fire <laughs> remarkably too well in a way. Um, you do accidentally sort of trigger them, and they do go flying off. And he also came with his planet key, which obviously was in the Cybertron line, and it's a silver earth key. I've had to do me a little bit of research on these because, as I say, I'm not as familiar with this line of the toys. I'll just give you a 360 of the car mode. I have to say, I'm pretty pleasantly surprised how nice this guy is in vehicle mode. You know, you really wouldn't know that that's a transformer, other than obviously, you know, for say a collector, you can recognise the style of what a transformer is, and obviously the the lines of joints where you know it's going to transform, and obviously he's got an Autobot logo stamped on his bonnet. But other than that, that could just be a toy car, and um, kibble-wise, not really that much. I mean, there's not really that much apparent underneath either. So a really good vehicle mode. I really do like it. Um, he has got a gimmick, but I will show you that in robot mode rather than in the car mode. You can fit on, and I'll do it gingerly so I don't fire off the missiles. You can fit on the rocket launchers into holes on the back of the car. And they just peg in using the green pegs at the back of the launchers. So you get an armed car mode for chasing Decepticons, I assume. But uh, again, pretty good. And it's nice as well that they colour match, even did a paint app on them to match with the car. It would be nice as well if they'd have put a hole on the back, so you could have had them as, say, roof-mounted guns. But, yeah, you know, that's just me being picky. For the transformation... He's quite, I suppose, quite basic for a deluxe, you know, where we've got used to maybe the movie line where they're like a sort of like ch Chinese puzzle box. Um, this is actually quite nice and simple along the lines of like G1. And to get a toy that I'm not as familiar with was really quite nice because it was that little bit of a challenge to like, oh, how do I transform him? And you know, you go through that whole sort of thing you got when you was younger when a new toy came out. So it was quite a pleasant little pick up for me, this figure. Anyway, to transform him, first of all, flip out the doors, which kind of works as well as a car. Um, again, sort of really simple sort of design, but it works really well. Pull apart the back section of the car, and as you can see, it instantly flips over. And you've got a hinged plate here with a small peg, and that needs to go into that hole there. So you turn it over like so. Then bring what are obviously the legs down. And then you need to lift up these black sections here with the silver on. And that reveals the feet tucked inside. And you've also got just behind them 
a little green area there what you need to flip out and that becomes like a heel spur flip the foot out as well and then just drop the black bit down and that's his leg done so I'll just quickly do that on his left leg and that's his legs done and they are fully poseable you've got effectively a ball joint at the hip so you've got full leg movement and you've got knee movement and to a degree a little bit of foot movement as well you can lift them back up slightly so do a little bit of a pose with his foot as well which in that respect compared to what I was used to growing up with a G1 that's incredible in that sense um, we were used to just bricks which were sort of like if you stuck those legs back together again and just stood it there like that so yeah fantastic in that way now for his arms you just need to flip the doors round like so swing the black section inside down and his fists are just inside just need to be swung out and again you've got pretty much full range of movement elbow and shoulder I'll just do the same there flipping that down and flipping the hand out and as you bring up the roof which he's done already on his own really his head is sprung loaded and pops up and this is where you get to see the sort of bit of a homage to wheel jack in the fact that he's pretty much got a G1 wheel jack head it's you know it's as close as you're going to get without it being a classics sort of version of him almost um, really great I love the fact that where it's sprung loaded that the ears sort of sections just sort of pop in and then just pop out as they come up really great really love that whole feature um, really, like I say, really nice toy. In some respects, I wish I'd sort of like been still into collecting them back when the Cybertron line was out. If this is anything to go by, and I'll certainly be looking at picking up some more of that line if this is anything to go by. If this is the standard of the sort of figures you got, um, his weapons can peg on as handheld weapons, obviously as guns. But they also have got a clipped area here and that fits on to his shoulder here so they can double up as shoulder cannons which I kind of prefer they look a little bit bulky in the handgun sort of mode so yeah really great and again kind of a homage to again Wheeljack because of course he did have his shoulder mounted missiles especially in the cartoon and obviously the toy he had two black ones in the cartoon he always tended to have one I don't know quite why they did it that way but again that's an old G1 Hasbro issue now to his actual gimmicky mode on the back of the roof section you've got this silver area here and you need to lift that up slightly so it just sticks up a little bit more and that gives a place to put his planet key into and that just goes up inside there but you just need to push on it and I'll do it while it's still front way so you can see it as you push it up he's got the key came back in he's got a sprung loaded claw mechanism which pops out and I suppose is doubles up as a claw come sort of blaster that opens up and obviously to attack the Decepticons. Now this does of course work in vehicle mode or robot mode so you could kind of grab hold of other vehicles I suppose in his, in his car mode but again a really nice little neat gimmick you wouldn't even expect it to be doing anything like that because it just looks like any part of the car just part of the grill but again I'll just trigger it so you can see it happen again and I really do like that. I, I love the fact that, you know, they made a well articulated, strongly made, decent figure. Um, there's nothing really wrong with him. He's got a couple of minor scuffs on the black painted roof, which I could easily fix that anyway. 
But other than that, he's in really nice condition, which when you consider, you know, I picked this up second hand after a kid's had it and played with it. And play with it does not seem to have been an issue. Whether the kid just didn't play with it a lot, I don't know. Or whether it's that robust that even though he's had a good old play with it and it's still unmarked effectively. Um, it's sort of like showing that this one is a figure that can really stand up to the uh, rigours of play wear and time. Because obviously, you know, if this came out in 2006, it's talking six years old already. So, uh, yeah, pretty good. It's definitely one I'd recommend. Um, it's not one, of course, you know, I'm not as familiar with this because obviously this is not the generation I grew up with. But it is definitely a figure that I could recommend. Um, I know as Wheeljack it's not accurate. But as a, if you could say it's almost like a relative of his, it could be his brother, something like that maybe. Um, it would kind of fit in quite well. And it's not a bad sort of size with the Generations line. Being a Deluxe, it's about that same overall size. So it fits in quite nicely with a Deluxe line and has got more or less the same sort of articulation so again it sort of really works and like I say you can sort of do different poses with him that you just couldn't do with a G1 you can actually make him look like he's walking um, but yeah really nice like, like this figure um, for what I picked him up for it was a steal which you know only was in amongst that lot I got for well, I mean, effectively less than a pound each for each of the figures. Um, so yeah, really great. If you find one of these and it's complete, I would say get it, because I don't think you'd be disappointed with it. Um, and that's about it for this review. Uh, makes a little bit of a change from doing something G1. I might do something else a little bit more modern. I might go for something in the movie line. I did pick up a few movie figures at the same time so again you could do those or even one of the Star Wars ones so add a little bit of variety rather than just always doing G1 just to get so that you're not getting so bored looking at toys that are over 20 years old um, yeah hope you've enjoyed that little review um, please feel free to subscribe and I shall see you again for another Transformers review thanks for watching